Radiation. We can't go to Mars because of radiation. I've heard that argument so many times when discussing the Mars mission. In this video, we'll review radiation risk of a Mars mission. Will radiation prevent us from ever going to Mars? And what can we do in order to reduce radiation risks? Welcome to Science Sci-Fi, connecting the public to science and technology through storytelling. My name is Ronis Friedman. I'm a science fiction writer and an IT guy. In this episode, of course, we're going to discuss radiation during a Mars mission. Stay tuned. A number of publication and research have shown that uh, during a Mars mission, we're going to expose the astronaut to a large dose of radiation. And this radiation could be dangerous, could be risky, and may be even cause death. There's some publication that I saw in August when I prepared for this video, Mars astronaut would get unsafe radiation dose even with shielding. Mars astronaut would get horrified dose of radiation, study says. There was a research from the European Space Agency about uh, how impossible a Mars mission because of radiation. So in this uh, topic, in this uh, video, we are going to discuss the different type of radiation, what amount of radiation an astronaut could get during a Mars mission, and what can we do about it, and if a uh, mission is even possible. So on the ag agenda, first we're going to discuss the type of radiation that astronauts are exposed to during a mission. Uh, like gal galactic cosmic radiation and solar flares, how much radiation astronaut may absorb during a Mars mission. A typical Mars mission is a three years mission, more or less. Uh, we have a Mars window that we can go to Mars with relatively less amount of rocket fuel uh, once every two years. So the idea is to travel for seven months on Ma uh, to Mars, then stay on Mars for about a year and a half, and then when Mars and Earth complete a circle and there is a window to launch back, then go back for another seven months on a voyage back home. Uh, typically, it could be around three years and there is quite a lot of radiation that does not absorb. What can we do to mitigate some of those risks? And of course, I'll during the presentation, I'll show some snippets from different TV and movie, uh, science fiction TVs and movies. First type of radiation that we are going to discuss are solar flare. Solar flare uh, event uh, contain charged particles, mostly low energy protons and also atomic nuclear, that's uh, helium uh, atom, two proton and two neutron, and also gamma ray. On Earth, uh, this type of radiation is prevented by the atmosphere, by the Earth itself, that is uh, blocking half the radiation that came from the sun, if it's coming from the other side. And also Earth has a magnetic field that uh, deflect all this particle, and uh, sometimes they come near the poles, and uh, that's when we see the aurora borealis. It's a very beautiful sight. Uh, so those are very dangerous, but they are not extremely dangerous on Earth because the Earth have a way to protect life from those type of solar flare, those are invented coming from the sun. What can astronauts do during a solar flare? Solar flare are rare. It could happen once every few years and they only last for a few hours. So on a Mars mission or a moon mission or a mission in space, typically what NASA or the space agency does, they have one small container or room that is uh, protected by shielding, typically uh, surrounded by water. It's a very fine, uh, small, uh, confined space. So astronaut has to squeeze inside and be there. Uh, but since it's only for a few hours, this is something that is possible. So whenever we have a Mars mission that takes seven months and then a few years on the surface and seven months travel back, You'll have one small room that is protected. If there is an event, a solar event, astronaut will run to this uh, tiny room, will stay there for a few hours until the solar flare is over, and then they can go up and continue with the mission. So this one is pretty safe, and we know what to do with it. The picture here is from solar flare that from the TV series 
from all mankind. And a couple of astronauts were exposed to solar flare and they have all kind of uh, health effect after the fact. Galactic cosmic radiation, it, in one part it's a similar beast, in another it's different than solar flares. Galactic cosmic radiation is a very similar type of radiation. It also co contains alpha, beta, and gamma, mostly beta radiation, which is uh, charged uh, protons, atomic uh, like hydrogen nucleus. Galactic cosmic radiation, however, it happens all the time. It's not once every few years for a few hours. It just background. It's a lot. It's it's not as uh, intense. But since it's all the time, then there is a cumulative risk uh, with it. Galactic cosmic radiation is coming from the Big Bang when the universe was created. It's a background universe from the universe, a uh, background radiation from the universe combined with radiation from all the stars and the black hole in our galaxy that is a lot closer, so we feel them. Uh, it's not, again, it's not a huge amount of radiation, but since it's constant, it could pose a risk. On Earth, we are protected from galactic cosmic radiation, mostly by the Earth magnetic field, in the same way that it's protecting us from solar flare. But in space, we are not protected. So the little room that we have with the shield, with the water outside it to hide for a few hours, it's not a solution for galactic cosmic radiation. In some case, it could even, if you have a little bit of shielding, it could even cause more damage than no shield at all because it reacts with the shield. So this is a bigger problem that we don't actually have a solution for it. Ram, rad, and all the jazz. In order to explain how much radiation it is, uh, we're going to see that in sea level, we are exposed to something like 0 0.001 rad per year, which is not a lot, so our body is very capable of repairing this damage and live for many decades and maybe even a hundred years is no issue. If you go to a dental x-ray, you don't want to do it too often, maybe once every two or three years, you get one rad. A shuttle flight is 0 0.05 rad. It's still partly protected by the Earth magnetic field and by the Earth itself because the Earth actually block half the sky, so it prevents half of the radiation from arriving. Moon landing is a bit more radiation between 0 0.2 and 1.1 rad. A Mars mission, that's a whole new beast. Mars is about 100 rad, which is quite a lot. It's not immediately fatal, like you're not going to die immediately, but uh, it's way, way above the limit, and it could pose a lower a higher long range uh, long term risks. So for X rays or gamma rays, one rod is equal to one rem. And if you're talking about uh, new, uh, neutrons or alpha radiation or proton, it's a bit more between five and 20 rem. Uh, so that's more or less how to differentiate between rod and rem. But I in most of the cases, we are going to not uh, distinguish them. Acute radiation is a radiation that uh, those that it actually fatal. So 200 rad, it can be fatal. People could die from it within a few hours. 50% uh, will die at uh, 150 rad with no treatment. At 800 rad with no treatment, you are 100% die. So Mars is a lot less than that. It's about 100 rad, but it's still causing a lot of damage. 1,000 rad, even with treatment, there is a 50% uh, chance to get cancer in the long term. And with uh, up to 2,000 rad, you, there is a chance a person can survive. So if you look at this, a Mars mission with 100 rad, not integrated immediately, but it's spread over three years, it's not going to be fatal during the mission immediately. So it's not like a Star Trek here in the Rap of Khan when Spock got a huge acute amount and then he died within a few minutes. That's not going to happen, at least not for galactic cosmic radiation. 
but it does have a long term impact what kind of impact uh, long uh, exposure to galactic cosmic radiation uh, picture here of the movie with mary kiri she eventually she was researching radium and radiation and eventually she died of cancer but that took many years the risk of dying at some point in the future in most cases of cancer it could also cause a decreased cognitive performance so if you want to send an astronaut to mars you want to make sure that once they land they will be able to perform and let's they don't want that they will lose like 20 iq iqs of their ability and it also risks for cardiovascular failure because it's causing damage to cells and tissue Uh, so if we can avoid radiation, we definitely want to avoid it. NASA have a career limit. Uh, they allow up to 5 RAM per year and 10 RAM in lifetime. So if you go under this definition, uh, it means that the chances of the astronaut, if you keep those limitation, To get at some point in the future cancer, 20 years in the future, 30 years in the future, that will kill it. Uh, you want to keep this by no more than 3%. So that's where these limits are coming from. It's also the same limit is being used in nuclear reactor in the US and in other places. Uh, so these are the under these limits. Astronauts are sent to the International Space Station. Typically, it depends on the age. It could be a little bit flexibility. It typically allows the astronaut to be for about one year in space. So that's definitely not enough for a Mars mission. So what can we do? Can we go to Mars? What are the options? If we want to stay within the legal radiation limits, the NASA allows us to now to stay only about one year in space. But Mars mission will be three years. So, and also during the Mars mission, uh, the seven months of going there and seven months coming back, you don't have the protection of any planet. So you have double the amount of radiation. So that's not so good. What can we do? We have a number of options. Option one is do nothing. Just send a space to craft, forget it. The idea behind, I, this is something that I personally don't support. I don't think it's a very good idea. However, some people argue that it's valid. A Mars vision is extremely dangerous. There are all kinds of risks. You could die from explosion, air leak, um, running out of food, running out of water. meteorites there are tons and tons of dangers so the risk of radiation of getting maybe 10 even 20 percent chance of getting cancer 20 years in the future this is something that some people argue it could be ignored based on the, all the other risks and some people argue that smoking is more dangerous so if we allow smoking and then why not allow a mission to mars um But yeah, if we can avoid it, it will be preferable. In the future, also, if you are talking about getting radiation now, that maybe in 20 years, you have 20% chance of getting cancer, but a percent chance higher than people who stay on Earth at sea level. And maybe in the future, in 20 years, we'll have better cancer treatment. I don't know, but uh, medical science is definitely progressing. So this is one option. probably want to try to avoid it, but it is still possible to do a mass mission that way. What other option do we have? Another option is travel faster. The riskiest part of the mass mission is the voyage to Mars and the voyage back home. That's where the astronaut get most of the doses. And in order to reduce the travel time, we may want to use a nuclear propulsion. So maybe instead of traveling for seven months, we will travel to Mars in three weeks. And if we go to three weeks uh, there, three weeks back, and we stay for about two years on Mars, we reduce the, uh, the total duration of the mission by a year. And also we reduce the time that we have the most amount of radiation. 
So just by traveling faster, we solve a big chunk of the problem. Once we get to Mars, we can decide to live underground. Uh, this is from the TV series uh, Mars from 2018. Uh, there are a few lab tubes already existing. It's like a big tunnel that were created uh, millions of billions of years ago on Mars uh, from lava. And we know what, where some of the places are, so we can try go there and build a colony underground. So while you're underground, astronauts who live in this colony, in this habitat, will be protected from radiation and can be safe. And they only go out outside to the surface uh, for a critical mission. We need to go to the surface. So that could be once every few days, once a month, for a few hours. So if you do it that way, and if you travel fast, then you cut a big, big chunk of the radiation that astronauts can absorb during the mission. Are there other solutions? Yes, there are. Good thing you ask. Okay, the first, another thing we can do is uh, have wearable shields, uh, wear a vest that protects some or most of the, not the brain, but uh, the vital uh, vital organs of our body. Uh, stay rad and tested with NASA and Israeli Space Agency, su such vest. It could be a solution, and maybe it's not entirely comfortable, but uh, if you combine this with traveling fast and living underground for most of the mission and only go outside for a limited duration. Maybe this could be a solution that can reduce their exposure to radiation even more. Another one is create an artificial magnetic field. On Earth, we are protected thanks to the Earth magnetic field. So why not build an artificial field? It could be for the size of, to protect the spacecraft. It could be to protect the habitat or so maybe one kilometer or something not huge or if we are a very advanced civilization and have huge amount of energy we can maybe build a radiation field that can engulf the entire planet but the problem with radiation field that it requires a lot of energy so energy is in short supply solar panels are barely enough to supply energy to the, the habitat to the colony or to the research station and maybe to make rocket fuel. And we, if we want also to create a radiation shield that will uh, at least double the amount of energy that we will need to use. So that's a problem, not impossible, but still a problem. Maybe you can bring nuclear reactor or bring huge, huge, huge amount of solar panels. I don't know. And the last solution that I'm proposing here in this video is the one I personally like best is medical procedure to reverse radiation damage. Here is from uh, Jessica Jones. It could be either by gene therapy. This is something that I've been using in the story of the novel that I'm working on right now. Uh, fixing radiation damage. I'd either it, you improve the body ability to fix itself, or you get the, absorb the radiation, it causes damage, and then you go to a treatment either on Earth or on Mars, and that uh, treatment will fix the damage, whatever damage you got, if you are not dead. So personally, I like this solution most, and uh, not only because it can solve uh, the problem of traveling to Mars, but also it could help here on Earth treat uh, diseases like cancer. So if uh, we have this, this is going to be a wonderful. In conclusion, radiation during a Mars mission is above the safety limit that is observed by NASA and most organizations here on Earth. That's definitely a concern. However, we can still go to Mars, knowing what the risks are and knowing that we need to develop some solution in order to reduce those risks. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask you, in order to monetize this channel, if you can subscribe and hit the like button, because this will really encourage me to do more videos and also it will help the YouTube algorithm to help other people find a similar this video if they like this topic. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.